Good morning. <coughs> Our first reading today is Isaiah 64, 1 through 9. This can be found on page 740 in your pew Bibles or 1506 in the large print. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides you who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all of our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take, a hold, to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us. You have made us melt and the hand of our iniquities. But now, Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Our psalm today is um, 80, 1 through 7. It can be found on page 581 or 1190 in the large print Bibles. Please read responsibly. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God, let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us an object of contention for our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is 1 Corinthians 1, uh, verses 3 through 9. You can find this on page 1131 in your pew Bibles or 2289 in the large print. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace that God was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel. The holy gospel for this morning is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 18. That's going to be found on page 978 of your pew Bibles if you would like to join along with us. Glory to you, O Lord. The words of Jesus. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven. And the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds and from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree 
learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that the summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard. Keep awake. For you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let's begin with just a word of prayer. Holy God, as we gather this morning to hear your words, we pray that you would open our hearts to help us to know, Holy God, what it even means to stay awake. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our refuge. Amen. Grace and peace to you, from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy New Year! Now well, that greeting's not a mistake. Today is the first week the first Sunday of the new church year. And this year, I, I always like this year because this is where we get to focus on the gospel of Mark and of John. John doesn't have its own year, and it's such a powerful gospel, so it's a, it's a joy to be in this time where we're going to be able to spend a little more time in that gospel. But today is also the first Sunday of Advent. You may recall that for the last several weeks, our words have been focusing on the words of Jesus from the Gospel of Matthew. And we have heard Jesus' words to the disciples and to us as he's preparing to leave them at the cross. But his message isn't all about that he's going away, is it? No, his message of Jesus is that he's coming again and that we and the apostles need to be ready. But you may have noticed that each of the readings for this first Sunday in Advent are pretty much sending the same message, aren't they? Jesus is coming. In this Advent season, this is the coming that we are waiting for. But we're also trying to get ready for Christmas, aren't we? And there's so much to do. And we're, we're trying to wait. But sometimes we have to admit that we can't wait until this commotion is over. I would dare to affirm that we could be more childlike in our Advent, in our waiting and preparing. See, children, this time of year, they don't sweat the details, do they? They simply long for Christmas to be here to receive and to open and celebrate and share the gift that brings joy to all the world. They know, they believe, and they never worry about the fact that everything will be ready when the time comes. Our sermons for the past few weeks, and them, the, the message has been, Jesus is coming, as I said, to be ready. And our discussion focused on what it means to be ready for Jesus. But in, our, in our text this morning from 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul assures us 
that we are just as ready for Christ's coming as the children are for Christmas. And that readiness can then enable us to do the very thing that we're not so great at. And that's to wait. But the Advent people of God are called to be ready and waiting, confident, because we are ready in Christ. And what makes us ready for Jesus' coming? We are ready because of all that God has already done for us. The Apostle Paul assures us in verses 4 through 7 of this morning's reading in Corinthians, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace that God, uh, grace of God that was given to you in Christ Jesus. That in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and in all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking any spiritual gifts as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. As the Corinthians waited for the Lord, they lacked nothing. They were, they were ready for the Lord's return. Like us, they did not know when Jesus was coming. And like us, the Corinthians expected Jesus to come at any time. And as they waited, they hadn't been told to sit around in the safety of their sanctuary, had they? They weren't told to huddle in their little group of believers. They weren't there to keep from all harm. No, they, they had the treasure of the gospel. And they were called to be busy even while they were waiting for Jesus. As they waited... The Corinthians were to be sharing the riches of the good news of Jesus Christ with others. The body of believers in Corinth had been blessed with every gift needed to do the Lord's work. Everything. I would venture to guess that their congregation was really much like ours here at Trinity. You see, the people of God's church tend to, in most cases look a lot like the other people in the community that surrounds them. And so do we. Verse 26 nails us when it says, Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. It would appear that the church at Corinth had many of the same financial struggles as we do. But we are told that they were enriched in every way with all speech and all knowledge. They had been gifted with tongues to speak the word. There were members who could interpret the words which were being spoken. And we read in chapter 14, verse 6, that the people of Corinth had been given knowledge to share. Now, brothers... If I come to you speaking in tongues, how will I benefit you unless I bring you some revelation of knowledge, or prophecy, or teaching? What is the knowledge that the people of Corinth had been given? It was the Spirit-given knowledge of Christ and him crucified. But Paul says, to look beyond the present day with, and your present gifts to the last day and to the Lord's greater gifts. And what is the present gift? Well, surely the church in Corinth can state that they had been redeemed from the power of sin, death, and the devil. And as such, they have forgiveness of sin and salvation and eternal life. And the truth is that as we hear at or Trinity Lutheran can wait for Christ's return, we also lack nothing. We lack nothing. We talked about this just a little bit in Sunday school today when we asked about the various spiritual gifts. Do each of us have all of the spiritual gifts? No. All of us have one gift of faith. 
Many of us have multiple. But you come together as the body of Christ, and we have here at Trinity every spiritual gift needed to proclaim Christ. But our challenge is this. We want to focus on Christmas Day and its gifts, all the presents and the stockings and under the tree, and yes, especially the gift of the baby in the manger. And it is a cool gift if you really stop to think about it. But as we've spoken of in the past, even this world doesn't have a major problem with baby Jesus in the manger. But baby in the manger, they can, they can manage that. But we have so much better. We have our Lord's fullest gifts. We have the good news of salvation completed at the cross of Jesus. Christ revealed as the Son of God an eternity experienced through the resurrection. Even with the knowledge of these promises given to us and for us, we're still waiting, aren't we? We are waiting for the day, we read in verse 7. And what day is that? Well, of course, we are waiting for one special day. Count them down now, 22 days until the day. We can hardly wait for the day to celebrate the revealing of Jesus Christ, God's Son, born in a manger in Bethlehem. And it would be a time for us to gather with family and to exchange gifts, to share a meal, to catch up on what's been happening in the lives of our families. And many of us will even gather here with our brothers and sisters in Christ, and we will hear God's word proclaimed. And we will partake of the sacrament of communion, where we will once again hear that our sins are forgiven. It's going to be a glorious day. Be there. But we are actually waiting for two days, aren't we? We read in verses 7 and 8, we wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, it isn't really Christmas Day which Paul is writing about in these, this letter to the Corinthians. You see, for him and for the Corinthians, that promised miracle, the coming of the Messiah, it had already happened. It was history. Yet at the time of the writing of this letter to the Corinthians, the, the Corinthians didn't even celebrate Christmas. The first recorded Christmas celebration is said to have occurred around 336 A.D., a couple of hundred years after Paul wrote this letter. Today, you and I wait for the annual Christmas festival, that celebration. Yes, that's very true. But we also wait the greater day. Just as the incarnation, Jesus coming in the flesh, revealed our Lord and his mission, and just as the crucifixion revealed our Lord and his mission, so the great day will reveal him as the glorious judge and the king. And so we wait as resident aliens, as strangers in a strange land that's not our ultimate home. We read in Hebrews 13, For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. And do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Did you know, though, that Advent also calls us to wait for a third day? The day of our physical death, on that day in which our souls are taken into our, the Lord's presence. Several of us, even here this morning, have experienced the death of a loved one in this past year. And we know that this earthly death, death is a reality for each of us, unless the Lord returns for us beforehand, right? Right? There's a 12th century Benedictine monk, I'm not even going to try this name, but he has a powerful statement. The day of death is for each person the day of the Lord's coming. 
bit of truth in that one. Hebrews chapter 9 tells us, And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Still, for each of these days, each of these, we're ready. We need to have no fear as we await any of these three days. For we read in 1 Corinthians that it is our Lord Jesus Christ who will sustain you to the end. Guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is, on that last day, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. You have been called into fellowship. Our brothers and sisters in Christ, that's true, but also who is here among us as we gather to worship? The Lord Jesus Christ. Because we are guilty, we are guiltless. Jesus has cleansed his church by removing the sins of believers through his own blood on the cross. And this cleansing has been applied to Christians through the holy baptism. When Jesus returns the church, the church will be blameless because God, who is faithful, keeps it. That keeps her in the cleansing flow of his grace. His church. Not this building, his church. Because though we are faithless, God is faithful. Because though we are loveless loners and runaway rebels, though we are not looking for God, we are given fellowship with his son. So again, this Advent season, the church waits made ready by the testimony of and about Jesus Christ. The church waits, ready, because we are gifted in every necessary way. The church waits, trusting that Christ sustains his bride, ready to the end. The church waits, ready because she is guiltless, unaccusable, through the imputed righteousness of Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we read, For God has made him, that is Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And the church waits, rejoicing that we are ready because God is faithful. And the church waits, eager and ready to celebrate the full fellowship of and with Jesus Christ our Lord. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in that same Christ Jesus. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen.